Hey guys, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All Part 16. We are beginning day one of court. So yeah, I yeah, let's let's just go. Let's just go. We've got an achievement to uh, to get today. <laughs> so it's not one that you hate. No. But it's one step closer to the one I hate. Yeah. That, that's like, that was the one that you hated getting the most, I think. Yeah, it is. I don't, I am not looking forward to it. Even over the language course? Because that one was pretty intensive. That one was, that one was just obnoxious. It wasn't. Painful. It wasn't killing me. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. painful. Okay. Okay, we're going to keep the save up. Uh, I'll just be perfectly transparent. We're going to keep the save up uh, just in case my connection's kind of weird right now. It is heckin' windy outside. So, um... But we're going to we're gonna go with it. So, um... But we're keeping this uh, first part 2-1 trial save. And I'm saying that out loud, so in case I do save somewhere, uh, I don't fuck up and rewrite it. Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will Im uh, implicate you. A mountain of evidence? Like, not Everest? Not that big, but yes. Oh, dang, dude. I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. I believe that's you. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Yes. I, b I believe it's almost time. Mia? Yeah, I was like, I thought Pearl channeled Mia. Yeah. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning the, this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. It's him. This is right. Good morning. Uh, this is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well... When I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit, how shall we say, tired. <laughs> don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. <laughs> For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest. If you please. Wait! The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer did? Who was that? Uh, um, uh, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Oh. 
court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. It's very crowded in here. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Kara? I... I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Uh, Your Honor. Please be quiet, Bailiff. The court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. And now then, what is it? Uh, Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What?! Shot! Somehow... I think this is our present that the man was talking about. His present? Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. Th this, this is totally insane. Miss Von Karma, is she all right? I don't have that answer. Uh She's alive and in stable condition. But that's good. Oh. Oh! Y y y your. I thought he'd show up. Your Honor. Due to the circumstances, Miss Francisca von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. <laughs> Miss Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The, uh, the court acknowledges the prosecution come back from the dead. Oh, right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Hmm? Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Witness, your name and occupation. Why do you look like you've been crying? My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm just so happy you're back. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. I'm also crying because of that. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. D detective Gumshoe? The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Uh, yes sir Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be a very rough fight. Yeah. It would it would have to be with Edgeworth as an op my opponent. Answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. He's gay. Gay for you. <laughs> <laughs> this murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Award ceremony, sir. Uh, the victim, Juan Corita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Uh, yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Uh, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. 
Time to press gumshoe on literally everything. Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. Uh, the ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8, and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby about 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Uh, who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? Uh, she's the defendant, Mad on Guard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, sir. Ah, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. Uh, when the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. On Guard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. The cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Karita, uh, Mr. Karita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good, hard look at the crime photo. Now, a real pro's attention will be drawn here to the bandana. Mmm, banana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then, what about the knife? Seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Mons autopsy report. Time of death, 8.15 p.m. Cause strangled with a scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Ooh, he did not die painlessly. No. Because according to you, strangulation... Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, according to you, strangulation is one of the worst ways to go out, isn't it? Yeah, it, it takes a lot longer than people think. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, Hollywood. Everyone's like, oh, you just hold on, you hold them for, like, two minutes and then they stop. Yeah. It's totally the sound of Nick just getting aspirin and taking it behind the bench. <laughs> Or a G with a banana flavor tic tac because banana. Mmm, <laughs> this is quite delicious. And why did you think that? Uh, because it was empty, pal. The Jammin' Ninja doesn't go anywhere with his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How is that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But... The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory, then. It, it was a solid theory, Your Honor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wright. So, it's, up, it's been updated with the Bears Caritas fingerprints. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? Uh, the guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Uh, well then, uh, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside of the case? Uh, yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So, the guitar case was empty before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. 
I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why, then, did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was a reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Don't sound too bitter there, Nick. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Uh, yes, sir. Matt on guard and Juan Corita were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja costume and was found in Mr. On Guard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant bought, uh, bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Kniff bears the victim's blood and in on guard's fingerprints. In the grip, gate water is engraved. Gumshoe, I already see the fucking gaping hole in your testimony. Sweet boy. And then there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm, and this button is also covered in blood? Yeah, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Jamma Ninja's button added to the court record. It was ripped from his costume. It's covered in Karita's blood, found in on guard's Hakama. All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? <laughs> I'll find an argument in your hole somehow. I beg your pardon. I am reading stuff wrong. I, Mr. Wright, I believe that should be discussed outside of the courtroom. I'm very tired. I'll find a hole in your argument somehow. I, I think we should continue. Unnecessary feelings are surfacing. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. I'm going to pretend you didn't say anything. I love how you unintentionally... <laughs> you unintentionally just write worth everywhere. You're welcome. <laughs> that was fucking beautiful, dude. But in terms of popularity, Mr. Ungard won, did he not? Yeah, but you know what's ironic, pal? Juan Corita was always one step behind Mr. Ungard in everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Creta lost the Grand Prix in the end. That's too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. Wait just a second here. Mr. On Guard was beating Mr. Karita uh, in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defend uh, defendant's eye, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Yes, I quite agree. Uh, well, detective? Um, it's not... Uh, well... I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Objection! Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. 
No, no, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. No, no, no! I'm sure I see. I I can't hear you that well. Wow, still an asshole to gumshoe, I see. Oh, okay. Nick is a uh, he's a bitter boy. Now, now, detective. Let's continue with the testimony. Would you like a hanky? I've got one. Thank you, sir. This big hawking blowing his nose. <laughs> No, not my poor pension, too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Y yes, sir. Uh, we can talk about my pension later, sir. Um, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Huh? What do you mean, pal? Oh, um, let me put it this way. I'm asking if you have any evidence to back up the claim that this button was ripped off of the Jammin' Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell just by looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it. Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterwards. M Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir. All right. I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Thread. Ah. Uh. The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Uh, yeah, that's it. They're a perfect match, pal. Ugh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. Oh, Mia's been watching his trials. When was the button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corita. And then we did a search on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey! What is he trying to say about me here? How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? Well, what do you mean, pal? By examining the finger, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm. So is the defendant of the owner of this knife, then? Uh, we really don't even need to press this. No. Gumshoe, sweet boy, honey... He bought this knife, huh? He bought it, Gatewater. Objection! Wait a second. What? what So the basis of your argument is that it was- this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand. <laughs> That's right, pal. The defendant... Did not buy this knife. Uh huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife. 
You'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has ga a gate water seal set into the handle. Gate water? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. The bellboy's in the gallery just crying. I mean, technically, he's the owner now. Yeah. So he's just he's just in the fucking gallery crying. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. Uh, how so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't know. Oh. oh. The question is, where did this knife come from? Wh why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Corrida's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. Uh, there's a knife and a fork on the table. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt on guard. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt on guard's knife was missing. Mr. On Guard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with the fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further del deliberation is a waste of your honest time. Although... I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Phoenix. The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, the gavel will be of his will be ringing out a sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Uh, actually, I do. There's one. Hmm. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. 
what the judge is saying right is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. I mess this up. It's a curtain for all of us. <laughs> Jesus, watching that whole penalty bar flash gives me the highest I'm... anxiety. I know. <laughs> Ugh. You may now present one, and only one, piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? The wine glass. Are you like 10,000% sure on that shit? Yeah, because everything's a mess, but the wine glass is intact. Take that! You said to let me guide you to get to a certain piece of dialogue, so... Yeah. I'm letting you do that. Yep. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of this crime scene one more time. This scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup was all over the floor. These were all things that were, at one point, sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is, that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that has had not fallen over along with everything else was this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Well, what do you have to say? Ah, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I, I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. <laughs> uh... Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. Uh, Mr. Wright? Cause, could Miss Andrews really have set this glass down without thinking? There's no way. I appear weaker here. This trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They might just fall for it. If you're thought provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves that it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on that table. Hmm. You turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. W what? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Th then. Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints. There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, who, whose were they? They were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were of one Adrian Andrews. What? Wine glass updated in the court record. <laughs> there is Andrews' fingerprints. And that is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't believe I fell into another trap. 
Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corrida. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Now, do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. W wait a second. M Mr. Edward, I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? He's got a point to prove. <laughs> well, you're delighted. Oh my god. I love every time he interacts with her. It's so fucking funny. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. <laughs> Just seeing the fucking... <laughs> witness, your name and occupation, please... What on earth? Ugh! Gotcha! I wonder what happened to that calm composure he, sh he had earlier. Oh, Edgy Boy, it's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet, it was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand? I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. These, we're going to get our voices mixed up again, as we often do. <laughs> I can't help but that they sound alike. Oh, shush, I'm talking to my edgy wedgy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps! Uh, yes, madam. No, no, no. By all means, interrupt her, please. Uh, <coughs> you know what? No. The prosecution asks that the defense knocks me out. He just knocks the prosecution <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, I do have a... I do have a pretty mean bright hook. I, 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 am, I am fully aware of that. I... I ask this in front of his honor as <laughs> as my sure? witness to knock me out. Punch me. Are you, sh Are you sure? A 100% take all of your misguided anger at me and just punch misguided, me. Misguided, huh? Punch me in the face as hard as you can and we'll talk about it later. I won't sue. Hmm. I won't charge for assault. I am asking with his honor here as a witness. M Mr. Edward, this is quite a drastic... You know what, Your Honor? Uh, your Honor. Yes, the yes. The prosecution. Right? The, the, the defense denies the prosecution's motion. What? I would much rather him, you know, speak with this witness at length. Uh, right. Uh, I think we've wasted enough of the court's time, so let's proceed. We will be speaking about this later. Hmm. Sure, we will. We will, Phoenix Wright. I promise you that. Mm, yeah, Miles Edgeworth, we sure will. Mm -hmm. Anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say that youth are hot headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. No, I just, <laughs> just wanted to get away from me because my love is too much for you. Now then, what should I start with? Next, quiet. Oh, 
The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you were a fan of the victim? Uh, again? Look, everyone is crazy over that on guard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something, but I think he looks like a twink. <laughs> Sorry, I just killed myself. For once, Miss Holtbag, I think we agree. <laughs> but not me, I wouldn't say anything so silly about Matt on guard. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Corita. Or Edgy Poo, of course. Edgy Poo is a real man. He's all yours. Oh, right. You don't mean that, and I know you don't. I hope you don't. Hmm. Actually mean that. Please don't actually mean that. I thought we were going to talk afterwards. Or do you no longer want to talk afterwards? So I'm fine with that. We will be speaking afterwards, yes. Just don't make bold statements like that, please. But those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Uh, very well. Of course you were. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. I forgot about the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand line. I love that line so much. <laughs> so our, um, our, our uh, achievement today has to deal with pressing old bag. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in front of the hallway. I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. And there was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard. Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm. So Mr. On Guard came out from the victim's room. You see, it had to be him. He's the murderer. <sighs> I see. Uh, well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Before we do that, I want to point out to everybody, because we didn't point this out earlier, because we were actually, like, more into character, but now that old bag's here, it's whatever. I mean, she throws everything out the window. Um... Francisca was shot in the exact same spot that her father was. Mm -hmm. Not only does she have similar habits, like gripping her uh, gripping her sleeve when she's uh, frustrated or impatient, like he does. Not only does she dress similarly, just less ostentatiously. Uh, she was also shot in the exact same fucking shoulder. But unlike her father, she has the fucking brains to get it taken out. Mm -hmm. i.e. Francisca is 10 million times the prosecutor that Manfred von Karma will ever be. Fuck him. Slay Queen. Miss Oldbag, what was your post on that night? I feel like Nick is drawing out this cross-examination now just to spite Miles. <laughs> yep. The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help her, how do you know? It was that lead-headed samurai show. <laughs> I even took out a few of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on. Besides, That's that manager... Me. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door. Something you were interested in. And just what was that? It 
It's not something I can go around telling everyone, you know. It's top secret between me and Juan. Ah, and Angie Poo, of course. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was uh, interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? Oh. But should it prove relevant, we can always have it appended to her testimony later. It looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm. And did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? Oh, then would you tell us the number of people who went in, in and out of Mr. Karita's room? I have no idea. I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why our age was not included in the report. I, I forgot that she had a canon reason for why we don't know her age. Mm. <laughs> Wendy, we can just pull your fucking birth certificate. Knowing her, she has that shit under lock and key. She went into, oh, like, yeah. public records and, like, burned it. <laughs> Only she has a copy of her birth certificate, and it's in, like, a fucking safe in the ocean. I mean, we just need to dig up her social security number, and then we'll be able to find her. Uh... <laughs> you sure about that? That. Yeah, she can't... She can't, uh... She can't hide that from the government. Never underestimate Wendy Oldbag. That spacesuit proves that she might, in fact, be, uh, from outer space. In any case, the witness then saw someone, correct? Who in the world is that? I'm not allowed to say. And this sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. The man that came out of Juan's room, it was, he was, yes, he was, ah, I'm too scared, I can't say his name out loud. Oh, I mean, you can go lean on Edgeworth for some comfort. Right? Oh. What I wouldn't have to- what I wouldn't give for Francisca's whip right now. Oh, that would be a match for the ages. <laughs> oh my god. Old bag versus Francisca, go. Holy shit. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. You saw my client. Are you sure about that? Hey, yesy. Oh god. Really? Oh god. <laughs> A lot of characters say that. Really? Yeah. Because I only thought of one other character. No, I, 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 on replaying everything, there are quite a few characters who do say that. Okay. I, I didn't even notice that shit. I just immediately think of that Investigations 2 character. Like, instantly. Oh my <laughs> god. Damn. Yeah, it's a good thing we're replaying this now, because as you can tell, three years later, not two years, I said two years, but it's actually three. I played it in 2019, it's 2022. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a good thing I'm replaying the trilogy, because Jesus. Annoying brat! When I say I saw someone, I saw that person! Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Because you get it all the time, whippersnapper. It's not as fun when you say it. I miss Maya. Oh. Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Um, the person's clothing. Please tell the court about the man's clothing in more detail. What a troublesome man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. To avoid a repeat of last year, I should ask more specific details. Let's debate the costume, just like we did in Turnabout Samurai. <laughs> yep. Phoenix, please. 
Um, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing. That racing jacket. Uh, he was wearing that at the detention center too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hm, men. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright, uh, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Hmm. It was very important. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Objection! Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that the witness said, uh, what the witness said about the jacket be amended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right, witness, please. Ah, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... He was wearing this flashy racing jacket. Honestly, it's all just for show. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? What do you think? It's not like I've seen him in anything other than that horrible thing. I'm sure he was wearing it. He's so sure of herself that it, it's, it's the point of self-absorption. She may not remember things or be mistaken here and there, but I don't think she's lying. That's bad for us. Really bad. But that's how the human mind is. It also has a tendency to jump off topic. She's strayed onto a few interesting side topics this time too, hasn't she? But that's what makes her a sweet old lady, right? Bia. Bia, are you are you sane? <laughs> Mia, I, I think I, Mia, I think we all need a nap. Mia's just used to really shitty witnesses. <laughs> yeah, she is. Mia's used to like worse than old bag. She's like, oh, this lady's a walk in the park. That's because you're not the one who has to question her. But wait, we were told earlier. But that button was found in the Hakama. Yep. That's exactly where I was going. Objection! Miss Oldbag. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Ah, it's button number two on the Jam and Ninja's costume. But now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it from a single glance. Give it here! Give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this! Ray Gun ASMR. Wow. She really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Ungard's body during his full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond the shadow of a doubt it was that rascal on guard. It was caught up in the pleats of his nickel samurai Hakama pants. See? See? And on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness. Now, it just may be me, and I do have an active imagination. Yes, you do. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Matt on guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? So sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear! If I wore the trendiest dress that made me think I was gonna run out of the to wear this ridiculous outfit, you yeah, it's hideous, right? You got a tape recorder stuck on my chest. It's heavy, so heavy, I wish we were switching these ages ago. Dreaming life for all these kids out there with a smile on my face, don't you understand? Now take a look in the mirror. Your clothes are not as interesting as documentary on curling. You should take a tip or ten from Edgy Poo. Now he's got style. Ah, the ray gun! 
Just give me a second. Jesus Christ. <coughs> I actually got out of breath from that. Oh. Now hold your tongue still for just one second. So what you saw in actuality was not Mr. On Guard, the man. But Mr. On Guard, the Nickel Samurai. But when you think about it... And they're really one in the same anyway. Miss Oldbag, this is very important point we're talking about. I have an awful sense of deja vu. I cannot believe this witness. I'm so thankful for her right now. <laughs> Edgy Poo, do you do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important. Agree with me for a change. I've agreed with you plenty of times in the past. Mm. Will you let me even get a sentence out without getting all puffy? No. Of course not. Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Uh, all right, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. On guard. On guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right, it was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume doing the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say that he was inside that costume. What? Hey, did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy, thinking such rude things. But, but the possibility does exist. Ah, yarns today. I told you, there's no way it was anyone else. You said that last year. H how do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful of a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Sweet, we're gonna get our achievement on statement too. Would you please get on with your testimony? Hm. Watch your language, young man. What sort of tone is that to take with an elder? My youthfulness isn't what it used to be, so you should forgive me for everything. If you keep on barking at me like that, I'll start singing at the top of my lungs. Uh, what? Nope. Nope. Just imagine warbling in the shriekiest voice. He's actually singing. Someone help my poor ears. No one is meant to hear old bag sing. It's so high-pitched, none of us can actually register it with our ears. <laughs> Outside. Even on, uh... <laughs> Outside. My... Yeah. The dog's barking upstairs. Yes. Is she actually? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gonna say, even outside... <laughs> dogs outside the courtroom. Mr. Edgeworth, can you please do something about this racket? Witness, I'll give you a piece of gum later if you be good and just stick to the facts. Okay! You promise, right? Right, I'll be sending the bill for the chewing gum to your office at a later date. Remind me to send you a thank you note too. Later too, Edgeworth old chum. Be a little bit more careful with your testimony, please. 
Not too long ago, you said he was wearing his racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago? Now let me ask you this! When you were itty bitty, what was your grand dream? What did you want to be when you grew up, Whippersnapper? Uh, my dream, huh? A stage actor. Uh, and, uh, I wanted to be Judge Wackner, hero of public court. So what? See? And look where you are now! You're not Judge Wackner, are you? Are you? Well... What I said earlier. Who puts any weight into things like that? The now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Well, since when did court become the uh, theatrics over testimonies? When you entered it. Shut up, Edgeworth. All that matters is that man was inside a costume. Isn't that enough? Achieve and unlock, Judge Wagner. And why would that be? That way, no one can see his face, of course. But there's still no advantage for him that I could see. In, fa in fact, you would think that the costume would make him stand out all the more. You're such an annoying child, you know that? You disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it! Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of costume. Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the post-ceremony show? Well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the Jammin' Ninja. Of course it included him. And that's why when on God came out of Dear Juan's room, I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyway. Again, I don't think we need to press this because it's very obvious. Yep. You would think it's the autopsy report, but it's not. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. N no, no, that's not my t intention at all. And that's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor. Do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Hmm. Is that what you're driving at? That's exactly what I'm driving at. What are we driving at, and whose car are we driving? What's on second? I can't drive, Your Honor. So we're driving Mr. Edgeworth's car. I suppose. Sounds reasonable. I am not allowing the witness in my car under any circumstances. Any um, circumstances. Other members of the court I would be more amenable to. I wonder what he's talking about. Anyway, <laughs> if Mr. Ungard was was really in the steel uh, in the nickel samurai costume. At the time of the murder. <laughs> then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on that this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all the previous fingerprints off this knife right uh, uh on the knife right off. There we go. It's okay, uh that that, that quick anyway killed both of us. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> the Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? Objection! He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Objection! And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? 
There's no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. At that time, the defendant had no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes, I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intentions of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with the theory? There is a contradiction. This, con this theory contradicts something in an earlier statement, or in an earlier testimony. What, what are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Engard was the killer. If that was the case... I think it would be impossible for the killer to go to have gone to the victim's room without intent. That's the kniff. The kniff. This knife. This was used by Mr. Ungard at dinner. Y yes we did establish that. Which means that if my client was, in fact, the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he was visiting Mr. Karita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At the time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth... Your theory was flawed from Suspicion 1. And one more thing. <laughs> I feel like Nick's about to go off. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. And another thing, your face is stupid. And another thing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Nick's just- You not... have some audacity to show up in here. The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> Can you even imagine? Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be on, or shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. Hmm. Or bees in the trap. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings me to my final point. Holy shit! We really just lose everything when Old Bag is in court, don't we? We do. Anytime she shows up, it's just, it just goes off the rails. Oh my god. I don't know what it is about Wendy Old Bag. I think she's just an actual space alien. <laughs> the, this knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Uh, order, order, I say. Order in the court. Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To frame him. <clears throat> it's to frame my client, Mr. Ungard, of course. To frame... Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Uh, witness! Hmm. 
It looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Edgy Poo? <laughs> a witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. On Guard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. Hmm? She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then. Who were you waiting for, then? Hm. That's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you are waiting for Mr. Juan Corrida. Am I correct, witness? <laughs> In the way you think, you're a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. A amateur? M me? What am I an amateur? Uh, m Mr. Wright, what is she talking about? <sighs> Tabloids. Oh. My wife enjoys those. I don't pay them any mind. Yeah. So, Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corita. Maybe, Phoenix. Maybe this Old Bag was waiting around for that person. It's who I think Maya or Mia's. Oh, Maya. Oh, Mia's hinting at. It's certainly possible. Oh, Freddy and Slipnik hurt me. Oh, I hurt. I hurt myself. Oh, Miss Old Bag. You were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Adrian Booth. Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ungar's manager. But, but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm. Hmm. Ha, huh, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article. If it can be called such a thing. I see why my wife, my wife reads these. Uh, then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews? Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hm, looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. W witness, what in the world are you... Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling that this is going, uh, I have a ve very bad, uh, I have a bad feeling about where this is, uh, ah, uh, wow, I can't fucking talk. <laughs> it's okay. Or read. Ah. Uh, watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. There we go. Your brain just kept going where this, where this is going. Yeah. And then you were tripping up on going because you're like, that's not right. Damn it. Yeah. I've also been working since ass crack of dawn, so. Yeah, you have been. Bless your heart. I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. B but what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I simply <laughs> cannot let this point slide. Stop laughing, right? I'm not laughing. You are laughing. I'm totaling. Will the defense please suppress their mirth? Oh, I can't guarantee anything. Of course. <clears throat> I see. It's good to have both of you just bickering again. It's very nice. <laughs> Dead 
silence. <laughs> we're not bickering, Your Honor. We're fighting. Yeah, Nick's like, we're on a full-on <laughs> fucking fight. <laughs> yeah. One of us is sleeping on the couch, and I'm not sure who it is. And it's me, because I'm just staying away. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting myself in the doghouse. <laughs> Good day. Even though he's in the doghouse, I'm the one on the couch. A rump. Very... I don't even know, know why we're talking about an al analogies of us being in the same bed together. Because we're not. Because we're not in a relationship, not. and we never were. Someone went left a suicide note before that could even happen. <laughs> like, Nick's just got off on this tangent, and everyone in court's, like, slowly looking at him. <laughs> Very well, then. <laughs> Witness, please testify about the secret information. Sorry, that mental image is just really funny. <laughs> uh, get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really. It's not like we're ten years old. I'm now just going to call that the Vader. That on guard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin Portwad by casting it, caught, uh, casting, casting and causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with one. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody tells, uh, nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? I say in a court of law with a huge gallery of people. The defendant sent his manager? What a detaste distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. And isn't there a saying? The truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth that the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. Hmm, but should this be true, then this proves that the defendant really did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. And now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right! On guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth! Well, as the old saying goes, you've got to burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Highway to the danger zone. Danger zone. <laughs> I wish someone loved me like Top Gun loves the song Danger Zone. You can't say something like that without proof. That's just slander. Pot, meat, cattle. But it's true, that woman was getting intimate with poor Juan. Look, it says so right here, doesn't it? Manager to the stars, Miss A.A. But the name of the magazine uh, this came from is Gossip Land. What? Are you saying that gossip is all just a pack of lies? <laughs> what do you yes. know? I suppose next you'll swear to me that the news is 100% truth. No. No. Uh... Honestly, Sonny, you can't discriminate between the news and gossip. She's got a point. <laughs> yes, discrimination is bad, Mr. Wright. I, I like that Nick is like, we're all above 10 years old, and then here comes Aji with just this nugget of wisdom that you learn when you're 10. <laughs> or hopefully before that. Discriminate? When did I do anything like that? Anyway, on God would never get me to say touche. You just said it. He didn't get me to say it. Hold it. 
just gonna keep provoking her. A scandal. What do you mean by that? You're a dim-witted one, aren't you? I can't believe you don't know what a scandal is. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? Uh, no, no. I wasn't asking what the word scandal meant. Even I know that much. Oh, well, that on guard thought you could own a monopoly on popularity. You don't have any proof that Ma that Mr. Ungard did such a thing. You must be suffering from shock. The shock of hearing the truth. And now, since you're in so much shock, you can't do anything right. Right. I can't do anything, but boy do I wish I could do something about you. You were the one that suggested she stay, right? And not knock me out. That we're shut up. Just saying. All right oh, then, well. Sonny. Show me what you've got. Can you show me proof that on guard didn't bear any ill will towards Juan? I'm going to decline her for now. I don't have anything to offer. See, just as I thought. And you were lecturing me about saying things without proof. You've just given me a free pass to say whatever I want, whenever I want, silly boy. Me and my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles. For you, anyway. So, what do you mean by I took action? Like I already told you, I was lying in wait close to the crime scene. Once that slimy woman came out of Juan's room, I was going to capture her and teach her a good lesson. Something you youngins need. You were going to teach her a good lesson? After kidnapping her? You're up. That's illegal. Uh, it's very illegal. Uh, did she admitting to conspiracy to kidnapping, Mr. Wright? Yes, she is. I believe she is as well. Should I station bailiffs in the witness lobby? I, I think, think we should, should, yeah, should yeah. listen to what she has to say, but yeah. Damn it, I didn't want to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make her eat the damaging beams of my ray gun. Like this! N no, stop! Well, it's too bad that woman didn't come through the door then. Wait. What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet? If that's true, then how do you know the secret information? Huh? Well, that's because uh, I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. Mm. It's a secret. Even if you drew the hole into my brain, you'd never find out. How in the world did this old bat get such a secret piece of information? I think I know, so let's present some evidence. So no one else is supposed to know the secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know this, Miss Old Bag? Wh wh why are you looking at me like that? Stop it! Witness. I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire the secret info, info isn't it? Take that! Stole the camera. The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh, yes, I remember that mischievous girl. She's been in court twice now. He reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outrageous, um, impressions. 
about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, 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 I said impressions. And then... And then... Then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless? Ah! That's it! That's the note! Ah! Ah! No! You see, this is something completely different! This is my top secret list of groceries to buy! Hmm, then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note. I'm a huge fan of Juan's, that's why. That infamous puppy head whippersnapper. She's working with that evil on guard, she said so herself. On guard, I'm his sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. I was only checking what she had written. I'm just so enchanted by the phrase, smiling like a silly duck. Sorry. <laughs> Miles is like, it's not too late. Just throw something covered in chloroform at my face. You can still walk over here and punch me. Yeah. There's still a chance, right? Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? <clears throat> Makes it all worth it. I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook this just this once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? Nah. <laughs> Pile on the pressure. If I let up on her now, she'll get away, and Edgeworth won't have to suffer anymore. <laughs> Nick! I have to find some way to inflict the defeating blow to, this pro to the prosecution. Witness! You said that the only thing you stole was that note. Is that correct? Stole? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible, lonely trash can that's off. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. <gasps> Nick said a swear. That's actually one of the first times he canonically swears, I think. Besides no, saying, like, damn you, Edgeworth, and stuff like that. He said damn a few times, but it's been he a while. He said damn it in the first game. Yeah, but in this game, this is the first time. Yeah. They they started getting a lot more PG. Mm -hmm. Until uh fucking Ace Attorney 5, which is rated uh Saro. Like it's so it's rated mature. Rated M for Meanie. Yeah. <laughs> it's rated. That'll make sense. That'll make sense when we get there. <laughs> Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? Miss Old Bag. I don't believe that the note is the only thing you stole that night. I think you stole the damn camera, too. She absolutely did. That's how she got the note. Miss Old Bag. That note was with a camera. Inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie $1,600 camera disappeared on me. Why, why, witness? What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it's only logical that you have the camera, too. <laughs> Looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Uh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know. I still eat meals like you. I still fall in love and borrow things from people. That's not borrowing. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's what I noticed. It said, Slime Bag Celebrity Photographer Extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of picture she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. A bailiff check this camera's photos. Hurry. 
We must examine them at once. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, now what do we have? There is only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it to the court. This is... This is the Nickel Samurai. See, I told you. That's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. Well, what does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. On God clearly stated that at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. If that is the case, then this Nickel Samurai is... the defendant. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright. The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? If that photo is really decisive, then we're done for. If there is an objection and hear and blow it, then I put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lada took, there's... there's... there's something strange with it. There's... there's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree that there is nothing strange with this photo. There is no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. Debunk with a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? That's a, almost a very good uh, tongue twister. Say that ten times uh, fast. Uh, oh, thanks, Your Honor. Um, anyway, please look at this photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Uh, um, well... Uh, I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this chance go by. Where in the heck did she take this photo from anyway? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now then, let's hear your objection. Okay, we need to save because if we are even in like the wrong fucking pixel, it's a game over. Yeah. What about this photo is strange? Feats. It is the feats. Uh, yeah, it's that they're bunched up at the feats. Yeah. Take that! Okay, thank God. I would like to direct the uh, court's attention to this area right here. Wh what are you pointing to? His ankles. If you could see this person's ankles, that would be one thing. However, you can't. Uh, and what does that mean? The costume person in this photo could not have been Mr. Ungard. What is the meaning of this? Objection! I wonder if you would care to elaborate with actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai poster. I I have Maya's here somewhere. Oh, Maya. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His his socks. You can see his socks. Exactly. However, in this photo, The Nickel Samurai is clearly holding up his uh, holding his Hakama uh, up just to walk. Mm. There is only one explanation for this. 
that the person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. All right, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Edgeworth is unusually calm today. That's true. He's just letting the trial run itself, as if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then I haven't damaged his case at all. Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not pat on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Hmm. I figured it would come to this. What? Right. I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven to the that the person inside this costume is not Matt on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Who is the person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. What we should be focusing on is Edgeworth's attitude, don't you think? Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, uh, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person inside this photograph? Adrian Andrews. Okay, I'm like, I'm waiting because I don't know when that line comes up. It, it comes up when someone else is on. The stand, okay. The stand, yeah. Take that! Uh, Adrian Andrews. If you want to know who that the Nickel Samurai is, it's none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be this Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Ungard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Ungard that night. And how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very, uh, very easy for her to get into, uh, a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Ungard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as a murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is that you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense moves to in indict Miss Andrews in the murder of Juan Carita. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Order, order, order! It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right. This is it. It was kind of bad for us. Oh. What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Ugh! If I don't get the verdict today, then my, uh... Now then, we shall send Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What, what am I supposed to do? The judge is about to... Uh, objection, objection. Now then. Please, Your Honor, continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. Right. 
I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrews' testimony if she is not... I abhor wasting such valuable time. What was that all about? Edgeworth. Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But, but we cannot due to this unexpected development. Unexpected development. I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subpoenaing Miss Adrian Andrews is all happening according to plan, even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. She is the next witness. Oh. Everything... Everything was planned out in advance by that man? That man? Somehow, I knew there was no way Edgeworth would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we, sh we shall take a ten-minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, the court will now take a ten-minute recess, as I just said. I'm gonna go cry in the bathroom. Well, Nick, Miles saved your butt. I'm gonna go cry in the bathroom for five to ten minutes. Maybe seven. And we made it through the stream today. Good. Yay! My thing was in the red the whole fucking time. There were a couple of times where oh, it dipped down to zero on the oh, upload geez. speed. Yeah. Apparently... I have 40.3% of dropped frames. Oh. So, I mean, we're recording, so people on YouTube aren't going to notice a goddamn thing, but, like... Yeah. Uh, the... Apologies the to the VOD. Yeah, damn, that might be kind of choppy and rough. Um, I I mean, like you said, it's it's still pretty windy. Yeah. We had a really, for those who don't know, um, Katie and I live in the same general vicinity. We had a really bad storm roll through last night, like really bad. A really bad surprise storm. Yeah, it, it was not, nowhere. yeah, it was not in the weather at all. And our weather apps are actually pretty good at predicting uh, the weather accurately. Not our fucking meteorologists, <laughs> but the weather apps that we use <laughs> are actually pretty good at it. Mm. The one that we have. So, um, it's, it's mostly accurate. Like, it's rare that it doesn't catch something like that. Like, it was pretty suddenly just lightning and then thunder. I just paused for a minute because I was like, did I just blink weird? And then the thunder rolled and I was like, oh, I guess not. But yeah, uh, Miles is running the trial now. Uh, Francisca has been taken been out. Shot. Yeah, she's been shot and she's been essentially taken out of the game. So, yep. bye bye, Francisca. And bye, sad, Francie. sadly, she only shows up one more time in the trilogy. Yeah. And not for long. It's not like a whole case is worth either. So, we really only got two cases worth out of Francisca. Mm hmm. Um, this is in like my fucking essay longs worth of notes but i will say it now as a pinpoint as well i do think a downside to this game is that we get such an amazing character like francisco who has a lot of nuance and subtlety to her and she barely gets any fucking time whatsoever mm -hmm. like we really like we get to know her but I, oh man we don't get we to get to know her better in uh other stuff in in miles's duology in the in the game that never came to america yeah. Specifically. She she does show up in Miles' duology, obviously, since she's his sister. But um 
like, I mean, you have to rely on spinoffs to get more, uh, more, uh, characterization out of her. So, um, that's a thing. So I, I tick that as a con in this game's, uh, a con towards this game. Um, and I'll talk about that later because we're, we're going to have to do a whole separate video about my thoughts about this case, the stage play versus the anime versus uh, the game and then just the game in general. Because I have a lot of thoughts. Capital T thoughts. Um, but yeah, uh, that was only one part of the trial was old bag on the stand. Yep. And Adrian on the stand is quite long as well. Yes. Yeah, because I was, I went and, like, I have strategy w wiki open just to see how long something might be. Um, just to see, like, what is, so, like, part, like, it's, like, part two, uh, two, one, and two, two. And I was like, okay, part two, two. Maybe we could get through this if we go a little, uh, no, we don't. Oh. Because it, it bullet points, like, kind of, like, every major thing that goes on, and there's 12 parts. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So and there's a ton of dialogue in all of those parts. So this is a long ass case. Yeah. We are not going to be finishing it this weekend. We'll be finishing it next week. For sure. Because day two of investigation is really long as well. We've already talked about this. We know there's a day two of investigation. Yeah. It all just plays out as to how. Uh, D. Keller lets that happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which we will start to piece together as we go along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, we already know there's a day two because they're not going to interrupt with like a thing of Maya. Of like how she's doing. They're they're not going to interrupt with like a flash of Maya and how she's doing in like while Nick's in the middle of court. Yeah. So it's not going to be like, you know showing her, you know, like escaping and running for the court in the middle of court. Yeah. So, but Nick doesn't know that. So the pressure is still on. Oh yeah. Poor boy. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. I am just delighted to be miles again. I am excited. I am I am continuing to be sass pot Nick. Oh, you are being a salty salmon Nick. <laughs> Boy's getting it out of his system. A year's worth of anger. I, just all coming out of his death this time. I, <laughs> while Miles is like trying to read the room, like, does he hate me? Does he? I'm trying to throw signals at him. Is this not sticking? Is this not working? Am I doing this wrong? I don't like the first game, but in reverse. Yeah, it, pretty much. Is this how Wright felt? Yeah. <laughs> He's more like, what is going on? He's very frantic. It's not like him. Not not this sort of frenzy. It almost sounded like he said he was going to go cry in the bathroom. Yeah. Hmm, I could have sworn he muttered something about crying in the bathroom. Oh, man. But yeah, so we will see you guys next time. It is a long session, so we will get past this part of court. Uh, but for you two... And we will get the... Uh, we'll get match. the... Where I'm going to lead us into a, 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 a small penalty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're taking a hit, not for an achievement sake, but for a hilarious piece of dialogue sake. And that's why I'm letting Katie sort of run this for now. Um, because I don't quite remember how to get that bit of uh, dialogue. I will not lead us wrong. Yeah, because you just replayed this like a month to a month and a half ago. Mm hmm. So. You've got it. All right. Yeah. And it's worth it because it is hilarious. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Katie and I really appreciate it. I realized I didn't really introduce anything properly this time. I'm sorry. I'm just like my brain's all over the place today. Um, so, uh, we will see you next time. And this has been Danny and Katie 
and we will see you next time. Thank you so much, and take it easy.